connected to. Can you hear me, Sarah? Sarah? Yes, Sarah. Sarah? Yes, yes, Mama. The Lord told me there's someone that you are connected to. Like Tanya? Do you know somebody named Tanya? Tanya. It starts with a T. Is it Taina? Taina is my mom, my mom. Taina is your mother? Prophesy! Prophesy! Sarah, huh? Sarah, we gotta pray. Yes, yes. We gotta pray because as I was meditating, there's something God showed me. And today we're gonna stop the work of the enemy every plan of the enemy that is against your household we're going to bind it today in the mighty name of jesus in the name of jesus because i saw this woman before me and i saw her fall out in seizure sarah are you there yes i'm here mama and i saw her fall in front of you in seizure and i saw her foaming out and I saw the spirit of death coming to take her away. But the Lord says, if we pray and cancel it today, your mother shall live and testify the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah, I receive it. Say that again, Sarah. Hallelujah. How's your mother's health? Uh, my mom, she passed away in uh, 2009. How do I see that then? And I saw the spirit of death coming to take her away. But the Lord says, if we pray and cancel it today, your mother shall live and testify the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah, I receive it. Jesus saw this coming a mile away, like a loving parent who warns their kids about the dangers in the world. He knew false prophets would rise up to mislead many. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves, he said in Matthew 7:15. You see, God doesn't make those kinds of mistakes. The Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, knows the beginning from the end. He knows every detail of our lives. To hear that a prophetess would tell a woman her mother is sick, only for the woman to reveal her mother passed away years ago. Well, that's a red flag, my friends. The Bible is crystal clear about false prophets. Deuteronomy 18 verse 22 says, When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the word does not come to pass or come true, that is a word that the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You need not be afraid of him. This is serious business, because a false prophecy can shake someone's faith to the core. We have to be vigilant and discerning. We can't just accept someone's word because they throw around terms like prophet or anointed. We must test these claims against the solid rock of scripture. Now watch another display of false prophecy. I'm going to declare a word over your life. Amen. For you not to walk single for too long. Amen. Prophesy. Because I'm here to declare marriage. I want you to pay attention. Now she 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 prophesied about marriage, right? Put that in, in the back of your mind. She prophesied marriage. We going somewhere. Papa said what? He just called me and said, for everybody to connect to the word that you just said, he said, have mama tell everybody to sow a seed for exactly what you said, word for word. And he said, of $1,500 to connect to this word and then bless them and pray for them. Amen. 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 The prophet has spoken. Hallelujah. Amen. The prophet has spoken. Amen. The prophet has already know what I'm about to say before I even say it. Amen. Are you here? I want you to connect with me spiritually. I don't want you to be in the flesh because if you're in the flesh, it's going to pass by you. Do you see that? So if you are, if you are not in the flesh, if you are not in the spirit, 
you're going to be distracted. You're going to be like, oh, she's talking about money. But if you are in the spirit. Do you have something to hold in your hands? Two weeks ago, um, Grandpa was on live on Facebook with Bishop Josh. And he instructed me to sow a seed of 888 for marriage. And that was the seed that I brought on Sunday. Mm. That was, I received miracle money that came in the mail. I'm not praying for marriage. No. And the struggle, look, the altar against you is not just for marriage. Yes. It's for you not to be anything. Do you remember earlier that she started prophesying about marriage to break that cause of marriage? Yes. What you did with the prophet last week has nothing to do with the service. Do you hear that? And what God is saying today. Because that was a word from the prophet. You have to obey that. Yes. You have to Amen? obey that. But for me. For her. As a prophet. As, as a, a high prof priest. High priest. I'm going to break an altar. I can't take you to God empty handed. Mm, come on. I can't. There are principles. I can't break God's principle. And then if I tell you it's broken, go home. I'm lying to you. And I can do that and everybody will clap hands. I'm telling you. Everybody be like, yeah, it's broken. Ten years later. Mm. I'll still find you right here. Ten years later, she will still find her the same place because she don't sow, she did not sow the seed. Then what about the eight 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 dollars that she sowed? But for me. For her. As a prophet. As, as a, a high prof priest. High priest. I'm going to break an altar. I can't take you to God empty handed. That's a lie. That's a lie. Oh, yeah. That's a lie. That's a lie. Do you send money to any of these prosperity fellows? If you do, stop right now. Don't you write another check? That's right. That's right. Don't you write another check? Oh, no. Don't you let these televised liars put you on a guilt trip. They cannot lead you to God except you pay money. It's disheartening. Do you even need someone to negotiate your healing with God? And let me tell you, this is not what God intended for his church. Remember what Jesus did in the temple with the money changers? He overturned their tables saying, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you make it a den of robbers. That's in Matthew chapter 21 verse 13, folks. Prophetess Lily Java is asking for $1,500 for a miracle. When did Jesus ever charge for a miracle? Did the Apostle Paul send out an invoice? No, they didn't. It's a clear contradiction to the teachings of the Bible. But who thought them all these deceptive teachings? If God is speaking to you to sow $1,000 seeds tonight, I'm asking for those amounts because I want to see your faith released tonight. I'm asking you today to give. I really am. I'm asking you to give for His sake, for His sake, and expect a harvest, really expect a harvest. And I'm going to ask you to give an amount to the Lord. I'm going to challenge you to give a hundred dollars. I think if you need to sow a seed right now, God wants to bless you. And the way you step through that door is the sowing of seed. You determine the size of your harvest when you sow your seed. Do you need a big harvest? Then you sow lots of seed. That's a lie. That's a lie. Oh, yeah. That's a lie. That's a lie. You are following these preachers who make you think all your blessings hang on dollars and cents. God have never sent no preacher in the history of the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation that sin went out and just preached to people how to get money, how to get, money. How to get rich, That's right. how to get wealthy. The only wealth that God sent a man to preach is his word. So what do we do when we encounter such deception? The Bible tells us in 1 John 4 verse 1, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. Don't let your hard-earned money or your precious faith be exploited by those who are more interested in serving themselves than serving God. Stay rooted in the word and keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith.